YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I am back with the Carthage campaign. At least I'm trying to be back. Yeah, it's still loading the campaign. So, yep, we should be good here. Just loading up the Bactria campaign, so that's what we're going to be back on. Um, it is somewhat late at night for me, so hopefully I'm not too off my game, but I'm feeling pretty good even though it's late. Wanted to get some recording done while I had a chance and pretty much just take whatever time I can get. Uh, hope you all enjoyed the live event that we did today. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, playing those battles on the duck mod was, was entertaining for me and I think it was uh, more interesting than just uh, standard multiplayer so I had a good time with that. Of course we, we last left off having defeated a an army of the Medians right outside Antioch, and so we're just kind of doing some retraining from that. It looks like this army has, or the general has leveled up. Unlock strategist for him and get ready for night battles. That's just the first one that I like to have for my generals. You know, if you want to do something different battle. whenever you play yours, it's Mount. not a problem. I do need to get a an agent over here. Let's let's see what we have going on here. This area is still being converted to Hellenic culture. It's probably fine for me to move on, but I just want to go ahead and recruit another champion here. The last one we had died of old age. It's pretty typical since the um, entering show of force. Sorry, I'm just trying to pick which one I think is the best coercion and slaughter. This guy's the most useful. Um, I forgot what I was even saying. In any case, I think it's just about time to end this turn. We're going to finish some research. This Ataku can be expanded. And for now, I'm just going to throw farms in. So let's see. All right. I believe that should be good for now. Uh, Oh, we got one other guy. This guy that we just recruited can be upgraded right off the bat. Uh, gets plus one cunning one way or the other. And I'm going to open the zeal tree for him. All right. I'm going to end this turn. I'm going to move that agent down into that army. And uh, once my army's... Let's see. Can you not see? Pontus Together, wants a non-aggression pact. Could be nigh invincible. The They're world allied with Pergamum, Bithnia, Trapezos. This would be good. These guys are kind of done the same lines as me, so I'm going to accept their offer. Tetractus, you have a good mind in your skull. Your decision here that is agent most actually decided excellent. to leave my army alone, which is, maybe he knew he was about to get killed, and so he took off. <laughs> it's perfect timing. He's quite the sly little fox there. I don't even know if I'm saying that. I keep saying Bithynia. I'm almost thinking it's Bithynia um, from the way it looks. Uh, I'll call it Bithynia, unless someone has a massive complaint with that. Take this subsidy. Our um, treasury is well full. Patane wants a peace treaty. They're willing to offer me seven thousand in payment for the peace treaty. That's um, that's doable. And then I could just uh, kill them anyway. <laughs> yeah, they think that's gonna stop me. They're mistaken. So let's Glory, see. Pergamum wants a non-aggression pact, which histories. is good because they're in line All with Pontius, Pontus and Bithynia. So I'm gonna accept this. It's kind of weird when you don't play as Carthage how people will actually sometimes cooperate with you on diplomacy. So yeah, I'm almost not used to that at this point. Uh, raise an army at Jalanus. Why would I raise an army at Jalanus? That'd be the Make haste, stupidest men. waste of time. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm retraining these troops here. I'm going to move this um, guy down here to do some military training. We finished the research. Uh, I can't remember what we were researching. Um, let me go back into my scrolls here. Research um, marine training is what we finished. So, right here. This allows me to build a better dry dock and dock. Um, plus gave me plus three replenishment for all units. The only one we haven't finished here is this siege. Minus 40% attritional loss when under siege. I'm going to go ahead and do that one. And then it uh, gives me minus 3% siege unit cost in the future, which is not a huge benefit, but it would be a benefit that I would be interested in. 
Gonna upgrade this farm here. Let's see if there's any other building upgrades back here that would be worthwhile. Let's. Uh, the problem with high-level buildings on Rome 2 is they they kind of go a little bit too far. <laughs> As far as the um, the bad sides, like how much food and public order uh, squalor you have, like it, it, I think it goes a little bit too far. I think this should have just picked and chosen certain buildings. There's probably a mod that fixes it. I just haven't looked for it. Um, that way you can build a few more high-level buildings, especially considering the one. I mean, it's interesting, and I like it, and I don't like it. Um, it's simple because you know the most places you can build in a uh, certain areas, either six and the big cities or four and small ones, so you kind of have to pick and choose what a province is going to specialize in, which I like, but in some ways it's frustrating when you can't build enough buildings to, to get what you want. Um, so I don't know. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I, I think I'm generally okay with it, though. Let's see. We have this army back here that had uh, captured these cities from Media Atropatene. Um, I have a barracks here. I also have a couple of temples coming along and this uh, Satrap's Residence. So we're going to be in good shape here. This army is pretty much ready to get a move on as soon as these places settle down just a little more, which I believe they will. Um, let's see, public order. I might go ahead and build one of these. It'd be worth a little bit of food um, at that point because it'll really help stabilize that province. See, here's here's that trade-off I was telling you about. This one has public order or public order penalties. This one has public order penalties. Um, this gives me food, which I probably no longer need at this point, so I might switch it over to an amphitheatron um, because I can use that to boost public order to offset the military buildings I'm going to need in Antioch. So we'll see if we can make this work. Yeah, we should be fine. I'm not even sure I need this barracks here, but I may leave it there. <clears throat> I just like to have a few points every now and then where I can recruit, um, but you don't want to overdo it either because it ends up wasting spots in which you could build uh, more economic focused buildings. So our... Uh... Wow, look, we can add to the cultural conversion of that dignitary, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and end this turn. The greatest day no, has no, there won't be a peace, peace treaty. Sorry. <laughs> this is troubling. You have rejected the word of my people. Unhappiness will flow from. I guess this I could day. have tried to make them into a satrap. I don't think they would have accepted it, but that would have been one way in which I would have been all right with that situation. I don't think Pontus or Bith Bithynia or Pergamum are any friend of Armenia, which is good because I really want to take out Armenia and probably going to go ahead and finish off Media Atropatene. Um, because pretty sure they're going to turn against me eventually anyway. But that massive payoff they gave me was was certainly <laughs> great, even though it's not going to be enough to stop me from backstabbing them. And unless they've patched it forward, I don't think there's any penalties for me backstabbing the crap out of uh, the Medians like that. Okay, sweet. We're not taking any more attrition. We can continue our march to Semendar. And uh, we'll take those guys out. Let's do some building. I got a, I got a lot of money, decent income as of yet. Not a, not as enough to really make me want to expand out like crazy, but uh, decent income. I'm gonna go ahead and build that dry dock. My food is temporarily down while we're waiting on a few farms to upgrade and stuff. Shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, we got this one. It's about to finish. We'll have plenty of food. Uh, I don't need to get too overboard on the food. It, it'll be fine for now. I'm trying to think. So is there any reason to think this province isn't going to continue converting? If I... Uh, I'm trying to remember. To pull up the settlement details. Settlement details. Here we go. Culture. Nomadic. Change next turn. Influence. Local tradition. Characters. So my character is adding a lot. Buildings are adding 8 plus 4. Yeah, so I can take this agent and go ahead and march towards uh, Samandar to use the agent there. It shouldn't affect my conversion too, 
too bad. So we'll still be in good shape. Um, I don't know that there's anything else that I can or need to build uh, on the end of this particular turn. So let's go ahead and end this. And at that point I'm thinking Ekbatana and Gazaka are going to be fairly well under control. I offer this morsel now <laughs> like a wolf at the door. Perhaps you will go find better hunting somewhere else. Steadfast reliability rating. Let's see. The acts of treachery, such as attacking your allies, decreases reliability. The less reliable you are, the smaller likelihood of success in diplomacy. However, betrayals are forgotten over time, allowing you to restore your rating. So I probably don't want to get rid of this steadfast by screwing these guys over, so I'm just going to reject their offer as much as I want to steal their money and attack them. Um, I'm probably going to get a little bit of that from Media Atropathene. Well, check it out. These guys came out after me and uh, talk about horse archer spam. And they have a couple of step ballista. Now tell me how it makes sense for nomads to be carrying around artillery units. It doesn't make much sense. <laughs> I do have plenty of slingers, though, to, to get the job done versus their horse archers. Got some cab of my own, some Bactria Noble Horse. They do have some Sarmatian Lancers, which are pretty good shock cav. Um, so we'll see what we can do here, though. Their infantry is just a couple of young axes. It's garbage. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this started, though. It's interesting fighting these step armies. It doesn't happen too often for me. Cool to see them have step ballista, though. I guess in some ways I'm sitting here trashing them, but that's actually a good idea because the AI is so bad with sieges, and these guys having so very little infantry, it's probably a good thing for these step armies to occasionally be training out some ballista because it would allow them to break through your walls and, and be a little more effective when trying to siege you. And I, I guess theoretically the horses could pull the ballista around at a quicker rate, so um, not a bad plan. I'd hate to be the infantry in that army, though. You'd probably be getting tired from always trying to keep up with horsemen. Okay. I'm going to put my slingers behind my phalanx. Take them off skirmish. Javelins I'm just going to take off of any type of firing whatsoever. Got my uh, Indian war elephants. here. One unit of hillmen here. Cataphracts here. Bactrians. And my Bactrian noble horse over here. Bactrian noble horse look pretty st stinking sweet. Awesome. Alright, so let's get this big old group. Start the battle. And here come the hordes. Those artillery really could potentially do enemy a lot of damage to me. Uh, I didn't know there was enemy reinforcements as well. And for some reason, my formations crapped up. Back to your positions. Yeah, it's not holding my formation right. So let me ungroup all these guys. Here comes the artillery fire. Ooh, they got an unexplosive shot too. That's that's just fantastic. All right, I'm gonna spread out real wide and bring up my slingers behind. These guys behind. Hopefully they don't fire at my elephants. I'm gonna spread them out as well. I'm just gonna spread all my units out. Take my Bactrian noble horse up this flank. They are firing at my elephants, so quite real possibility that they're gonna run them back. I'm gonna use my uh, very powerful cab to see if I can push forward and potentially. Uh, take out those artillery pieces. What do they have over here? Sarmatian Lancers, I mean, I don't see why my cataphracts can handle these guys. I'm just going to plow forward with my general. Let's see what we can do here. Our general is under attack. Didn't really get the kind of charge I wanted there. Okay, we're gonna take out this ballista over there. I have to use my elephants to de defend my skirmishers. I'm gonna 
The men are wavering. Yeah, that's not a surprise. My hillmen are wavering. I don't know why these pikemen are out of formation. There's flaming arrows flying everywhere. So that's going to really hurt the morale of my men. Got a Sarmatian Lancer into my the men are wavering. Slingers, which is bad. Can't afford to lose my Slingers. I'll hit the Sarmatian Lancer, though, with my Elephants, and we should be should be good. It's quite possible my Elephants are going to run amok. The enemy artillery is gone. So I can now focus on taking care of business here. I'm going to get my War Elephants out of there. Okay, my Slingers are still firing away here. Got my Bactrian horsemen running down horse archers that are not fleeing fast enough. Orders understood. Bactrians, by your command. Slingers. Okay, my slingers are still just peppering away on all these units out here. Got all of my horsemen running down their horse archers. If I keep killing enough of these guys, it'll probably go ahead and... Yeah, it's going to cause a chain route, probably. I hate shooting towards my own units, but don't really have a lot of choice here. I may not be able to catch all these horse archers, but if I can just kill a bunch of them, it'll uh, allow my slingers to be able to finish their job a little easier. Try and get into these young axes and route them. The enemy general is dead. Okay. Now we should be starting to see some effect here. Slingers just took out the enemy general. Alright, so we've managed to pretty much kill the horde of horse archers. I've still got plenty of ammo with my slingers. Took some pretty good damage from these guys but managed to get the job done. I'm just gonna bring this... Okay, there we go. Alright, so we've chain routed the, uh, the nomads at this point. Can't believe with all the flaming arrows flying around that my elephants didn't run amok. Wow. Some of my slingers did alright, others not so well. Interesting to see here. Yeah, their ballista got a number of kill relatively quick. It's a good thing we took them out. Otherwise, most of their units were pretty worthless. 143 kills here. That Steph Lancer must have been the one that got into my skirmishers. So, heroic victory over the Orsite, or Orsi, or however you say that. Um, we'll just go ahead and push forward and take their city. It probably can't have too much defense left, I don't think. And I don't think it's a major settlement, so we shouldn't have to besiege anything and fight against a, uh, a very large... Uh, garrison force at least I'm just really glad that those horse archer spams aren't controlled by a human a simple tribute is all that is expected and um, keep dreaming and all <laughs> keep dreaming I'm not going to be paying you any of your money back All right, we're gonna stop the adoption of this. Subject gains notoriety. Let's see, so the royal family is still not really gaining a lot of influence, unfortunately, and even though there's not anybody alive from the other family, they still control 49% of the court. Tell me how that works when they don't have any noblemen. This member of our family has run up considerable debts. His actions have brought disgrace upon him and the whole family. I am going to disown him. And right when you think you've made the right choice on those kind of things, it usually turns out to be the wrong choice, but that's okay, I don't really care. Uh, a civil war would just allow me to get this whole mess over with anyway. Let's get rid of this Homer. Let's force him across the bridge, because his, his movement range was keeping me from being able to, uh, to go forward. So on the next turn, we can get to Samandar, which makes me mad because these guys are getting to retrain all the while, while my guys are not. 
So, a little bit frustrating. Commander. I think this army's full. Yeah, I don't have any room for mercenaries. So, nothing we can do there. Okay, so Antioch, almost finished with the Amphitheatron. Commander. Four more turns we have left there. I'm trying to think, so Media Atropatene has these two cities. Uh, we're at peace temporarily with Armenia. Who are they friends with? Now they are friends with Media Atropatene. So whenever I backstab Media Atropatene, um, Armenia is going to get ticked. And understandably so. So let's get ready to backstab them. Let's see, all they've got is <laughs> Bithynia took Palmyra. Okay. Okay, we do have a military access agreement with Persia, and we don't need to worry about Armenia. I'm just going to start trespassing, get ready to move on in. Okay. When I say trespassing, I mean I'm just going to be trespassing whenever I get there. Why is this place not stabilized? Are you kidding me? How much public order do I need before it's enough? I have two temples. This place will stabilize shortly. It's probably just a conversion from the other culture. Yeah, Hellenic culture is still on the rise. Eastern culture is still waning. I think this would be another good time to recruit an agent here, so I'll just recruit a dignitary. Now let's see, plus five line of sight, military intelligence. Growth per local province. Edict, city wealth, local province. Um, guess I'll take this one. How can I be a Use here to spread some cultural influence. And let's go ahead and keep this agent moving down here towards Samandar as well. Got some upgrades to make here. I've done accomplished skirmishers, which probably means there's the next line of that. I could do inexorable conquerors, which gives me melee damage as well. That'll be handy. And open up strategist. That's all the upgrades that we can do for now. You know, I haven't named my armies on this one. Um, we should name the armies. That would be fun. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll probably call it good for this episode and start you all off on the next one. So the Brothers of Xenophon, huh? That's cool, but we're changing that to the Brothers of Patchy. And then, let's see. And then, of course, here. Oh, I think I have an idea for this one. Um... Bactrian Pain Train. Nice. And then the Centaurs. Let's rename these guys here. Patchy's Raffle Stomp. There we go. Patchy's Raffle Stompers. Okay. All right. Uh, in any case, hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'll be back with uh, more soon, of course. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.